Já, og svona fór það. Ég væri mjög bjarsýn ef við værum ekki í svona miklu kapplöpi við tíman. Þetta segir Stefan Ramstorf, hafræðingur og sérfræðingur um lofslagsmál. En nýjasta skýsla 800 vísindamanna um hlýnun jarðar af mannavöldum gefur ekki beinlínis ástæði til bjarsýni. Það liggur fyrir hvað þarf að gera en tregðan er mikil og gallinn sá að áhrifin ganga ekki til baka þótt mannkynni náði tökum á losun gróðhúsalofttegunda. Og nei, þetta er ekki ígjur og hræðslu áróður, segir hann, heldur blákaldar staðreyndir. Þór Arnarsdóttir og Bendit Ketilsson hittu Ramstorf þegar hann var staddur hér á landi á dögunum. Welcome, Mr. Ramstorf. My pleasure. So, um, climate change has been a big international issue for many years, a huge debate. Uh, now there's a new report out. Can you tell us, uh, in short, what it implies? Yes, this report is the effort of uh, about 800 scientists from around the world for the last three years putting this together uh, voluntarily without pay and it summarizes the state of climate science and one of the key findings is that uh, we are now more certain than ever that humans are responsible for, um, uh, they actually dominate the global warming over the last 60 years. The natural factors of the last 60 years are roughly zero, so we are basically responsible for practically all of the warming seen since 1950. And there are many indicators from observational data that demonstrate this. We see the rise in sea levels, which has accelerated. We see the loss of Arctic sea ice in 2012. We had the record low so far, but the long-term trend is definitely down. We see the increase in air temperatures. We see the increase in ocean temperatures. We see the decline in snow cover and uh, various other indicators. One additional one I might mention, and that is that the oceans are getting more acidic because carbon dioxide dissolved in the ocean water is forming carbonic acid and as the name says that makes ocean waters acidic and threatens marine life. But every time a report like that is published, even though you say there are 800 scientists behind it, there will always be at least a few that step forward and say they're wrong. The climate change isn't as serious as they say. Um, why, if you're always getting more certain, why do the, these voices keep popping up? Well, that's been with me since uh, I started working in climate science uh, more than 20 years, actually by now about 25 years ago. And you have to know that there is an overwhelming consensus amongst climate scientists on this issue of at least 97 or 98 percent of climate scientists agreeing. but. Of course, this touches uh, special interests. There is a massively funded campaign from fossil fuel interests to disinform people about climate science. And also to a normal person, the, this very dire prospects, they raise emotions like fear and guilt and feeling of helplessness. And the way many humans deal with such feelings is that they kind of push away the inconvenient information. So it's a, it's a climate denial, would you say that? Are, are yeah, we in yes. denial in, gener in general? Well, we have two forms of denial. One is the outright denial of facts that is really sponsored by special interest groups. And then there is a kind of denial of the average society of most people who in a way they know that we are facing a massive threat to human civilization, but they're not doing anything because of uh, feeling helpless, not knowing what to do. But we have to realize that there are solutions. We can still limit global warming to a maximum of two degrees, which is widely considered as a danger level. And uh, we, all we need to do is invest in a transformation of our energy system away from the fossil fuels to uh, basically renewable carbon-free energies. But this seems to be going so slow, so in, sh in short term this would mean I would have to stop driving my car, stop, you know, taking planes, uh, traveling abroad and all that, because if, if everyone takes a responsibility, uh, I mean, that's a difficult thing. People really don't want to change lifestyle. So, and, and the, the transformation is going so slow that that's not even an option. Well, 
I would be a bit more optimistic because the transformation is actually going incredibly fast. I think one of the greatest success stories is the phenomenal exponential growth of renewable energies around the world. This is what really gives me hope. And we see this in Germany, for example, where renewable electricity production is now about 20%. It's as big as our nuclear share ever was in Germany and up from about zero only 20 years ago. And it's one of the properties of exponential growth that when it starts at a low level, you see nothing, you see nothing, you see nothing, but it doubles every year, sorry, it doubles every few years. And then suddenly it really reaches a critical mass and takes off. And so I'm not worried about that. What I think is very important to realize is that now that we have this massive growth of renewable energies in Europe, we need to go about it in a strategic planning way, because as long as it's only a few percent, you have no problems with the intermittency of the renewables. But when you hit 20%, 30% renewable electricity, then you have to change your grid, you have to make it a smart grid, you have to have a stronger grid to even out uh, the different generation in different regions, depending on where the wind blows, where the sun is. So you need to have a strategic energy planning and uh, a Europe-wide energy plan, and that still is lacking. But that's Europe-wide, but when you think of the world as a whole and all the catching up that, that other continents have to do, Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America, that's a different thing. Or is that an opportunity, maybe? Well, there is a great opportunity for uh, develop, developing nations and uh, the nations like China that are, are kind of catching up very fast to basically jump across that fossil fuel age mm -hmm. like they are basically uh, jumping over the age of uh, hardwire telephone lines and they are getting their whole new telecommunications already mobile. And so there is a huge opportunity because there is massive investment in energy infrastructure in the BRICS countries now. And that it's just a question of directing it into the right way. Of, so it's not that we need uh, to spend uh, so much more extra money on this energy transformation. It is more importantly, it's a question of spending the money in the right way. I will give you one example. The global energy assessment that was published last year by hundreds of energy experts shows how we can stay uh, below two degrees global warming. And it concludes we need to invest between 500 and 1,000 billion US dollars in addition into our energy system. And that sounds like a lot. But it doesn't sound like a lot if you realize that uh, the International Energy Agency estimated that fossil fuel companies last year spent $700 billion just looking for more fossil resources. And this money would be more wisely spent on solving the climate problem and investing into a clean energy future. The key thing is once you have made that upfront investment, this clean energy future will even be cheaper for us because once you have the infrastructure, wind and solar is extraordinarily cheap. So I can hear or at least interpret from your words that you're optimistic. Well, some days I'm optimistic, some days I'm pessimistic and I would basically be extremely optimistic if we had more time. The thing is, this is a race against time because climate change is advancing fast and there is a lot of inertia in the climate system. That means once we have reached zero emissions, the temperatures will not go back down. They will stay elevated at the level that we have reached by then. So that is one of the main findings of the IPCC report. Climate change is irreversible on a human time scale. So we have to get this right the first time round with a precautionary approach rather than kind of overdoing it and then regretting it, uh, we cannot dial back climate change then. And we have very little time to get our emissions reduced to zero. And that is what worries me and sometimes makes me very pessimistic if I see how much talking, talking, talking there is still about basic things in science that are already well established for many years and how little action there is in, in many countries, including the United States, on the political level. Thank you very much for being with My us. My pleasure. Thank you. Haraldur Geir Hlöðversson, Lauruglum á Reyjum, skoraði í gæra á kraftajötna í sjóðum.